on the David Frost Show, Richard Nixon. Hi, Mr. Nixon. Hello, Mr. Frost. It's a pleasure to be here. Hi. Well, we have a lot to get covered, so we better get to it then. Mr. Nixon, do you feel like you accomplished your goals intended with Vietnamization? Why, yes, of course. I promised to withdraw troops, and that's what I did. We scaled down to less than 30,000 troops at the end of my administration, and when I came into office, we had over 500,000 troops with LBJ. Hmm, that's interesting. Then how come the war was escalated with your decision to bomb Cambodia, despite your promise for withdrawal? Cambodia supplied North Vietnam with many supplies from the Ho Chi Minh Trail. This posed a direct threat on the South Vietnamese and thus democracy. I believe in peace with honor, and our country's values correlate with that belief. I did achieve peace with an armistice in the Paris Peace Accords. However, I just had to take a few unexpected measures in order to ensure that peace. But some Americans seem to believe otherwise, notably expressed at Kent State, involving four student deaths. What do you have to say about these violent riots and public discontent? Our police force did what they thought was good in order to promote peace. However, I had no direct affiliation with their choices to pull arms. But in addition to that, Mr. Nixon, it has come to the attention of so many Americans that you have exercised extreme power during this, your presidency, especially pertaining <coughs> to Vietnam. Do you feel that the War Powers Act that was passed by Congress in 1973 <laughs> was directed at your administration specifically? No, I do not. I realize I've been criticized for a supposed overuse of power, but any good president utilizes the power that the people elect him to use. Um, this is one of the best examples of this is the legend, wait for it, Derry, Andrew Jackson. I feel like the War Powers Act was more directed at LBJ, hmm. if anything. Thank you for that, Mr. Nixon. Now for your so-called greatest achievement, cooling attentions with the two most powerful communist giants, China and Russia. Why do you think that peace with these communist nations, the leaders our country have fought against and condemned for so long, was necessary to obtain during your presidency? Why not continue the stance of promoting nothing less than absolute democracy and capitalism? For the past two decades, the U.S. has focused so heavily on combating communism that domestically we were hurting. During my administration, we were especially struggling with stagflation and we desperately needed trade. The Soviets and Chinese are some of the strongest trading markets in the world, and although we didn't like it, we had to make amends with them. I figured it would be, it would be best to set aside our differences in order to prosper as a country. Also, the threat of a nuclear war diminished with a strategic arms limitation treaty and the anti-ballistic anti -ballistic missile treaty. Therefore, therefore, <laughs> therefore the war was less of a threat to us. Thank you for that, Mr. Nixon. Now lastly, in regards to the situation in the Middle East, do you think at that time that supporting Israel was truly the right choice considering how important, important oil stakes were for this country? Absolutely. I know we struggled due to it, but we do not want to look weak and we have always and will always honor our commitments to other countries. We have had an alliance with Israel for a long time and I was not about to throw that away just because times were not favorable to us. Hmm. Well, I'm sure many Americans shared the same belief, but it did lead to an oil embargo and economic strife at home, which we will continue in our next segment. Thank you very much, Mr. Nixon. Buy a new car today! Now, welcome back to our show. Now, Mr. Nixon, do you feel at all responsible for the economic difficulties that devastated the nation as a result of the oil embargo that the OPEC established? No, I do not feel responsible. As I said, we have to support our ally, Israel. I did everything in my power to ease the burdens of the American in this time of strife. There are ways that we can fill the energy gap domestically without destroying our natural resources. Without the embargo, we wouldn't have realized the impact of pollution on the environment. And what did you and your administration do to improve the state of the environment? Well, after Silent Spring, I decided to pass the Clean Air and Water Acts. I also created Earth Day. All these things are bringing back preservation from the progressive movement. The economic issues resulting from beating the Vietnam War financially have increased during your presidency. Why haven't your policies worked to solve these issues? Again, I have done everything in my power to help America from an economic standpoint. I've done significant things with the wage and price freezes and taking the U.S. off the gold standard. Ultimately, the economy will bounce back on its own. One of the most controversial strategies of your campaign of 1972 was your abandonment of the support of the civil rights in your southern strategy. Don't you agree that endangering the newfound equality of Afri African Americans was an extreme tactic, tactic in order to get a few extra votes? 
Those votes were extremely important for my election, and I didn't abandon civil rights. As shown by my Philadelphia plan, I actually extended affirmative action to entire minority groups, not just individuals. I also extended equality with the Title IX, responding to the growing feminism movement. Roe versus Wade was a court case that directly affected the feminist movement. Yes, it was a large success. Even though Berger was, Berger was supposed to be conservative, it was a win for the ladies. Yes, it was. Now, your administration specifically was remembered for the widening of the credibility gap severely. Can you discuss the decisions that you made prior to the exposure of the Watergate scandal and the Pentagon Papers to increase public distrust in government? I was not involved in Watergate, therefore there is nothing to say. As for the Pentagon Papers, there is nothing I could do about Kennedy and Johnson in the 60s. I only inherited the problems they made. And finally, the public was extremely distressed to discover that Ford and par had pardoned you completely. There's nothing I can do about that. There's no reason why I should be pardoned in the first place. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much, for Mr. Nixon, for allowing me the honor of your first interview since you, your resignation of the presidency. See you next week on The David Frost Show.